Oh, what an, uh, what an honor. If I'm not proof that God doesn't call the qualified, and we just hope he qualifies the called, I don't know what is. Members, I realize there are more of you out there right now who are Googling OU football than Oklahoma Speaker of the House. And I want to begin first by thanking Representative Graw for his vote. I know he had numerous constituents, he told me this morning, calling, asking him to vote for uh, Speaker Boehner, and he chose to vote for me. And Randy, I appreciate that. I know you're under a lot of pressure from your district. Representative Copeland, the deal's off. <laughs> Members, thank you again for this tremendous honor. Thank you, Representative Sears and Representative Cox, for your kind words. Representative Inman, I look forward to working with you and serving with you as well. You're a very capable and noble servant of the people of this state. Let me also say thank you to Justice Jim Winchester from the Supreme Court. Justice Winchester has been a, a friend from before I walked in the door, as well as his wife, Susan, who served as Speaker Pro Tem. And uh, Jim, thank you for your service. Thank you for sharing your family uh, with us here in Oklahoma. And it's an honor and a privilege to have you with us. Thank you, Justice Winchester, for being here today. It's also an honor for me to have uh, with us today Brother Tom Cooksey, who has been the, the pastor not once but twice of the First Baptist Church in my hometown of Cherokee, Oklahoma. He is now the pastor emeritus. He has uh, just in the last couple of weeks moved uh, home to his family farm outside of El Reno, Representative Fisher. I think he may be one of your constituents now, uh, perhaps, and where he has uh, moved to, although I think he's still registered in my district for a, for a little while until he can get that changed. But uh, Tom is the, uh, the person that, uh, that, that married us when Jana and I got married here in this building. Uh, but uh, he, uh, he and his wife, Claudia, really took us to raise from the time they moved to Cherokee when we were children uh, a long time ago when he was just... Uh, starting out as a very, very young, young pastor many years ago when we were children. Uh, but uh, Tom, it's a privilege to have you here. His wife, Claudia, was my brother's kindergarten teacher, and they've just been such a special part of our family for so many uh, years and so many occasions. And Tom, it's an honor to have you uh, with us today for this session and for our joint session. I'm also honored to have several family members uh, joining me on the floor today. Of course, my uh, partner in all that I do, the real speaker of, uh, of our house, uh, Jana, and Jana, thank you for being here today as well. Caucus members, also thank you for giving me time to get my family here. When we did this about a year ago, I only had about an hour and a half notice. So I only had, uh, Jana and Austin were able to make it in the hour and a half drive time it takes from home to, uh, to, to get here. So I appreciate uh, the chance to have them here. Seated with, uh, with Jana is our uh, daughter Ashley, our middle child, a national champion in FFA this year and so proud of uh, her. She's a junior at uh, Fairview High School this year. And uh, our youngest, Austin, who is uh, here as well, who's uh, missing out on his second day of kindergarten after the Christmas break to, uh, to be here. And our oldest daughter, Taylor, we just uh, sent back to to, uh, to college and she uh, couldn't be here because of her duties at uh, college today and uh, miss her being here but uh, so proud of everything that she's doing as, uh, as well. You know our spouses make tremendous sacrifices for us and those of us that are, are here know that. Our families, they make sacrifices for our families. They make sacrifices for the people of our district in many cases uh, just as, uh, as we do so that we can be away from home and so that we can be here to serve our state. And those of us that have young children at home also realize the sacrifices our family makes due to our absence. I don't think probably any of us thank our spouses and our family enough for those sacrifices. And members, particularly the new members that are here, I just want to make sure that you remember, take time for your families. I know you're excited to be here. I know you're excited to get to travel around your districts and be invited to speak at uh, numerous events. It's okay to say no once in a while and stay home with your family. They grow up too fast, and there's proof of that right over here. Make time for your families as well as serving the state. And to my family, to Jana and Taylor and Ashley and Austin, thank you. And I love you very, very much.
members, it's an opportunity to make memories with your children, involve them where you can, spend time with them at home when you can, invite them to the Capitol when you can, and cherish those memories because before you know it, you're standing here in your final term and it's, it's time to go home. There are sacrifices, but this is a great place for children to grow up as well and a great opportunity and take advantage of that. Also seated to my right are two of the most supportive parents any son could possibly have. Uh, two of the most spoiling grandparents that our three children could possibly have. My dad, uh, who was also Jana's basketball coach when she was in elementary school. My mother, uh, who is uh, one of the most supportive. Uh, I think she definitely relishes her grandparent role uh, even more than her parent role. I'm really, I don't recognize her sometimes. This is not the same woman that raised me. She is uh, so proud of her children and grandchildren. It's an honor to have my parents here. My father, uh, who just won uh, his uh, fourth state championship as a track coach this last year, and I'm so proud of both of them. Uh, welcome to the house from Cherokee, my parents, Steve and Kathy Hickman. My brother and his family are here as well. Uh, my brother is the high school principal at Cherokee. Uh, yes, he is my dad's boss. Uh, it's kind of an interesting turn of events in the last couple of years when he went home to be the principal. Uh, but it's, it's neat and as you go through those life experiences to be able to have a father and son celebrate things like state championships together is something special for them. Uh, and I'm so proud of, of him, his wife, Megan. Uh, who is uh, an attorney in Enid, and uh, their children, uh, Holly and Jade. Thank you very much for being here as well to my brother Jeremy and his family. And also, my uh, aunt and uncle are here from Carmen. They have traveled down. Um, Krista and Dean Hughes, uh, who farm uh, with us as well in northwest Oklahoma, and uh, really growing up were uh, like a second set of parents to me. It was a wonderful way to grow up, to have all of your family close by. And uh, they are, are a very special part of, uh, of our lives, all of our lives, and uh, probably knocked on our doors and campaigned harder for me 10 years ago than I did. And I don't know if it was just to get me out of the area and get me down here uh, or, uh, or what, but I'm so proud of them and love them very much and appreciate them being as well. My aunt and uncle Dean and Krista Hughes, thank you for being here today as well. <laughs> Members, we're given an opportunity here. It, it is a sacrifice, but it's also a blessing to serve in this body. God sets us up with different tools, but one of the key tools that he gives us to share our testimony with, with others is something to talk about. Your service here is something to talk about. It gives you a chance to uh, open up and have conversations with people that you wouldn't otherwise. It gives you something to talk about and to use that as a ministry. And for, for all of us here, it really is a, a ministry as well. And I would encourage you to use your opportunities here to minister to others and to use your something to talk about and being at the Capitol to be a blessing to others just as we are to each other. It's a humbling opportunity to be seated here as members of this legislature. It's an incredibly humbling experience to be standing before you, an incredibly overwhelming experience to be standing before you, uh, to be asked to, be serve, to serve as Speaker of this House of Representatives. Thank you. Thank you for placing your trust in me to serve as your Speaker of this 55th Oklahoma Legislature. I also want to say thank you to the people of four counties in Northwest Oklahoma. Alfalfa, Woods, Major, and Woodward counties who asked me 10 years ago to come here to this capital to represent them when they couldn't be here on a daily basis and the opportunity to serve them for these final two years. It's something that I will be forever grateful for. And yes, Ripson Watson, that is four counties. Some of our districts are four counties, not you know, four neighborhoods. But <laughs> it is a privilege to, uh, to get to serve four counties in Northwest Oklahoma. I also want to say thank you to my predecessor, Representative Elmer Maddox, who served in this body for 16 years before he retired in 2004. His advice and counsel and support have been uh, tremendous for me and very helpful to me. And I encourage uh, you members to, uh, to be in communication with your predecessors and learn from the things that they've experienced as well. I am blessed. I'm blessed to serve a, a part of the state where Jana and I grew up that gave us so much. And it is uh, a privilege to be able to just give back a little something to a wonderful part of that part of the state. Members, a year ago, I asked you to come together. I asked you to come together like those in the shining city on the hill that President Reagan often talked about. 
And you did. We came together as a unified body. And the house was stronger for it. The house led on numerous issues in this building. The house's position was strengthened as a unified body. And so today I ask you to do that again. As we embark on this next session, we face a most challenging year for Oklahoma. Not because our economy is not growing stronger each day, thanks to our state's hardworking citizens, men and women primarily in small businesses and large and small communities across 77 counties. But we face a year in state government that will challenge us, that will require us to find solutions to our fiscal future. Oklahoma has one of the strongest economies in our union, yet our past decisions have created a unique crossroads that demand us to fund core government services and keep businesses competitive across all borders. We stand side by side, each as elected members of this body, faced with a choice to work through this challenging budget cycle to meet Oklahoma's needs or to work against each other and fail those who sent us here to represent them. This will be a year that requires sacrifice from those who utilize the services that state government was initially intended to provide. Sacrifice from our state employees who provide those services and sacrifices as we determine what programs are beyond our mission and must be ended because they're luxuries we can no longer afford at the expense of essential state services. Things like public safety, education, access to affordable health care in every corner of our state. This will also be a year that requires creative solutions from all 101 members of this house. Indeed, this will be a year for all hands on deck. And for our 22 new members, gone are the days when you would have been able, not only able to, but expected to sit on the back row and keep quiet as the issues are debated here on the floor of this House of Representatives. It will be a year of all hands on deck. But while we do face significant challenges this year, the diversity of experience and the depth of the members of this body give me great confidence that once again, this House of Representatives will not only meet those challenges, but we will lead in meeting those challenges as a unified House of Representatives. Even with our challenges, I hope you also see the possibilities before us this year. We have the opportunity to reform our tax code, the responsibility to minimize government regulation, to create an economic environment where Oklahoma businesses can create jobs and be profitable. An environment that will be recognized by entrepreneurs and sought after by companies located across the globe. We have the opportunity as well as the responsibility to improve our public education system, to do what's right for our children and prepare them for their future. We have the opportunity to advance needed reforms and corrections, the responsibility to ensure safe working conditions for our correctional employees. We have the responsibility to protect the investments we've already made under new leadership in the last 10 years in our roads and bridges to make Oklahoma a safer place to travel as well as a better place to do business with the infrastructure for our businesses to grow. We have the opportunity to ensure rural and urban Oklahomans all have access to quality, affordable health care, the responsibility to stand up to the federal government's efforts which overreach, and the responsibility to protect our freedoms and assert our rights as a state under the U.S. Constitution. And we have a responsibility to the taxpayers and to the future current and retired state employees to continue improving our retirement systems. There are 101 people in this room who were elected as individuals. Sometimes it makes it challenging because there's 101 of us who are the most popular person in our district on election day. Now we have to figure out how to work together. It's kind of like sharing the same umbrella in a rainstorm. How do we come together, not as individuals, but as a team to move this state forward as one body, as the House of Representatives? There will be plenty of negative that you experience here. There will be plenty of people telling us what we can't do. I encourage us to focus on what we can do. I encourage you 
to encourage each other as the session moves forward and as we face challenges. And I, I know as we work to meet the challenges we face, there may be disagreement on how we move forward, even though we all agree that we want what's best for Oklahoma and we want to move forward. This is what I ask you. I ask you that in those times when we do disagree, let's agree to disagree respectfully. To value each other's opinion. Disagree respectfully and move on to the next issue after this house as a unified body makes its decision. Members, the challenges are day great. The days will be long. This democratic process will get noisy. There will be agreement, as I mentioned, about where we want our state to go, but disagreement about how we get there. It won't be easy. But our founding fathers didn't intend for it to be easy. Through all of this, I pledge to you as your speaker to serve with respect for each elected members of the People's House, to be firm but fair, to ensure the majority can conduct the people's business, but the rights of the minority are protected, realizing that majority and minority on many issues before us will not be divided by political party. Members, we've been given a tremendous honor by our constituents to represent them in this beautiful and special place. It's a privilege I hope you take seriously and an opportunity I hope that you enjoy. In President Washington's first State of the Union speech, January 8th, 1790, he challenged the Congress to build upon their prior good work for the American people, saying, quote, still further to realize their expectations and to secure the blessings which a gracious providence has placed within our reach will in the course of the present important session call for the cool and deliberate exertion of your patriotism, firmness, and wisdom. We today in this house will need the cool and deliberate exertion of the patriotism, firmness, and wisdom of the 101 of us. We do face challenges, but when I look across this house floor today, I see a team ready to roll up their sleeves, work hard, find ways to do good things. When those days do get long, remember the words found in Galatians 6, 9. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Members, I mentioned what I asked you to do almost a year ago. Matthew 5.14 describes the church by saying, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. Again, a verse that President Reagan referenced often when he spoke about America being the shining city upon a hill. Those in the city on the hill are working to be seen, positioning themselves to be visible, not for their own benefit, but for the benefit of the rest of the world. Today, I ask you again, join me, all of us together, 101 of us to come together like those in the city upon a hill for the benefit of all, not for ourselves, to make an impact so that when we leave here, we can look back at what we've done, at the sacrifices we've made, the sacrifices our families made while we were away from home serving in this place, and see that it was worth it, for we made a difference for the Oklahomans we served and the generations of Oklahomans to come. I hope you'll join me in looking at the challenges ahead and at the opportunities to work together to find a better way for Oklahoma. Together, if we don't give up, we can chart a course which will set the stage for the next generation to be able to live, work, and raise their families here to secure the blessings which our gracious God has placed within our reach in this special place we call Oklahoma. May God bless you. May he bless our great state and may God continue to bless America. Thank you.